forward and speak into the mic. I just want to know if there is a minimum utilizable amount of water you can remove from a river. I mean, this is an all India problem. They're doing it. They are um, exceeding the the eco flow um, by withdrawing excess. Why can't there be a simple formula which lays down for all rivers in India that this is the minimum flow required to keep the river alive? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that is a requirement. It is not an option, and uh, which is why that slide is there. Uh, if you see for Kabini. Uh, Let's say left to the farmers, they would have gone and exploited the inflow amount. But that would mean that the elephants in the Kabini reserve area would have been suffering droughts every year and their populations would have dwindled and therefore the rest of the wildlife as well. So there is a minimum ecological flow that has to be maintained in every river. I don't know the percentage. It may vary. Or is there a percentage? I, I don't think it's a standard percentage. It has to be calculated each, each per, per, per river, yeah, I think so. But in a way, let me add to that. See, the very formulation of a minimum flow or an ecological flow is really not sound thinking. Because it assumes that the right thing, the normal thing to do is to take water away from the river. And that, as a sort of concession to the environmentalist point of view, you will leave a little water in the fall of the river, you can take away the rest. That's not the way to look at it. What is the Basically, the natural flow is the minimum flow. There is not a single drop of water which does not serve a useful purpose. So there is no such thing as a minimum flow. The minimum flow and the maximum flow are the same. But obviously, we have to take water for various purposes. So if we have to reverse the question, how much water can we safely take? Now, you might say either way we come to the same number. But the way you look at it is an important uh, influence you know, on your thinking. So if you approach it from the point of view of minimum interference with natural flows rather than leaving a minimum flow, I think we would be much better off. Uh, why is it that the sewerage plant is not working, the one that's been built at 65 crores? And is there some way to upgrade it so it will work? See, Bangalore is a city where um, a lot of funding is coming in to make it a really global city. Uh, if you look at the kind of projects that are coming into the city, we are planning uh, inner ring roads, outer ring roads, peripheral ring roads, elevated expressways, uh, everything to move people and fast cars. But if you look at the budget allocations and the kinds of money spent, yeah, cards. Uh, the, the kind of budget allocations for waste, for water, for transport, for housing, I think transport is getting the maximum amount of money compared to water and waste. Not public transport. Yeah, not public transport. Uh, infrastructure for private transport. Uh, whereas not much is being spent on uh, issues of water and uh, waste. As a result, all the five uh, sewage treatment plants that we have today, they don't have the tertiary uh, part of the treatment that is functioning at all. They, In many places, they've only installed the primary and the secondary treatments. Uh, tertiary is, uh, the primary part is where it removes all the suspended floating particles. The secondary part is where uh, suspended solids like, you know, they get settled down, sand particles and things like that. The tertiary, I think, goes through some kind of a osmosis process uh, where further cleansing takes place. And that is important when the water is so toxic. Uh, it's only through reverse osmosis that you can remove these uh, dissolved solids and uh, toxic materials. That is not happening anywhere. Uh, there is no money to put in the tertiary <laughs> treatment plants. And again, we have, uh, just as how we have the southeastern to the northeastern sector has been uh, converted into an IT corridor, whereas the northwestern to the southwestern is a manufacturing sector. We have automobile accessory units, garment dyeing units, uh, hundreds of uh, distilleries. In fact, Pepsi and Coke have all set up their plants there. All these plants, again, 
uh, by law they have to have a effluent treatment plant. But if you look at the KSPCB records and various other permissions that they need, none of these uh, industries have an effluent treatment plant. Um, as a result, uh, it, this has become a huge problem in Bangalore. Just want to add, uh, there was recently a, a scandal which broke out. A scandal broke out just a month ago, uh, two months ago, and the scandal was that uh, you know this underground drainage systems had to be revamped in the southwest part of Bangalore, which is part of the Vrishubhavati uh, drainage area. And uh, between 2006 and 2008 or 9, a lot of contracts had been awarded. And all of them had been awarded uh, in a manner that there were no records kept. So a particular commissioner who served uh, till last month uh, managed to start an investigation and, and essentially uh, recommended that the Lokayukta should conduct the investigation. The very next day, there was a fire inside the city corporation, and that record room was burned down. You know what was the volume of the corruption? 25,000 crores. Every MLA and MP had a hand in that pie. And they are re really the kingpins of a network of contractors. The drainage system was built only on paper. And this was money that came from JBIC, from ADB. Expensive loans, these are. 25,000 crores is the volume which the state government as confirmed, was invested in that area. But there's really no dra drainage system at all. If that drainage system had worked, you would not have seen Rishabhavati like this. Because the idea was that drainage system would channelize, separate the sewage and the stormwater flow, and take the sewage to the treatment plants. Today there is no separation because of the type of corruption. And this is just recently after 2005, six. You know, we are talking about the corruption in North Karnataka in terms of Bellari, the Reddy Brothers, and so on. but. Uh, unfortunate uh, result of that type of politics is every politician thinks that whatever be the public money that is being invested, that should be the behavior. It has become systemic to the administration in the state now. I'd like to add one more point. Again, urban planning is something that has completely uh, not been there in a city like Bangalore. Uh, when we started expanding in the 1950s and 60s actually, it was in the late 50s that Bangalore had these major expansions that took place. And when the first planning started, uh, the area that I showed, Bull Temple, that was one of the first newly planned areas of uh, Bangalore. It was only there that we had some minimum uh, drainage systems that was laid. Uh, 